I'm going to be straight up with you guys. These settings are basically the same as last season. Not much has changed, but let's just get straight into it. If you do use Google Chrome, the first thing I want you to do is open it up. And in the top right corner, you'll see three little dots. So click on those and it'll bring this little drop down menu. So from there, just click on settings. From there, you'll see on the left side, you have all these options. So click on advanced and then from there, click on system. And that'll bring this page up right here. And all you need to do is check this off here where it says continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. The next step is for all my mouse and keyboard players out there. If you do play mouse and keyboard, just go to the search bar on the bottom left and type in mouse and you'll see mouse settings. So click on mouse settings and that'll open this up here. And from here, we want to click on additional mouse options on the right side and it'll bring this little menu up. And from here, you want to click on pointer options and you'll see right here, it says enhance pointer precision. You want to make sure that this is unchanged checked otherwise there's going to be mouse acceleration on your mouse and we don't want that that's going to affect your aim and your muscle memory the next thing i want you to do is go back to the search bar and you're going to type in game and you'll see game mode settings pop up right here so we're going to click on that and we're going to want to make sure that game mode is turned on here if you do have an nvidia graphics card you're going to want to click graphics settings here on the right and then you're going to want to turn this on here where it says hardware accelerated gpu scheduling if you are a streamer who's streaming off the same PC you are gaming on, you do not want to check this on because it can affect OBS and make your stream look all laggy. And if you're on AMD, you won't even have this option, so you can't turn it on. You'll have a different option here. So again, if you're streaming on a single PC setup, do not turn this on. And if you're on AMD, do not check on the setting that you do have here. And then you will have to reset your PC for these changes to take effect. After you're done with that, we're going to go back to our search bar again, and we're going to type in background apps and we're going to click on background apps right here and it'll bring this menu up here and from there we want to just check this off where it says let apps run in the background otherwise all this stuff is always going to be running in the background while you're gaming which will definitely affect performance so we don't want that the last thing we're going to do for our windows settings is go back to our search bar and we're going to type in power and you should see power and sleep settings so click on that and then on the right side here you'll see it says additional power settings so we're going to click that this menu pops up here and you're going to want to change it to high performance now it might be hiding under this little drop down box so you might have to click on that to find the option i've seen some people asking about windows 11 settings and unfortunately that's something i can't really help you guys with as i don't have experience with it and i do know that windows 11 is terrible for gaming in comparison to windows 10 so if you do have windows 11 i highly highly recommend just fresh installing windows 10 i know it does suck reinstalling installing all your games and logging back into everything, but Windows 10 does perform a lot better than Windows 11 currently for gaming. Now for the AMD settings, I will admit that I do not have my AMD PC anymore. I actually gave it to a friend. I have found Nvidia to be just a lot better for my needs, but the most important thing on AMD is to go to the gaming tab and then copy these settings here that I have in the screenshot on screen. This is where AMD has a huge advantage with the Radeon image sharpening and then the color filters you see there on the right side that don't give any hit to your FPS like using Nvidia filters would. So copy all of these settings down and Warzone is just going to look so much better for you AMD users. Something that is a huge FPS boost for you AMD users is to enable smart access memory and this is how you do so. You will find both of these settings in your motherboard settings so you'll have to go into your motherboard and enable both above 4G decoding and reset size bar support. I believe this is only supported on the newest AMD graphics cards and CPUs if you have both of them in your system. So just Google your graphics card and CPU and see if they are compatible with this because if they are, this can be a pretty big performance boost. And then for the Nvidia control panel, if you didn't know, all you got to do is right click your desktop and click on Nvidia control panel. And then from there, you're going to see manage 3D settings on the left side, which is where we're going to start. And then I'm just going to scroll through these kind of slow for you guys so just copy them all down if we go through all these individually it's just going to take way too long from there you want to go back to the left side here and click on change resolution and you're just going to make sure that your pc is in its native resolution and your screen refresh rate is set correctly because i know a lot of people out there are probably playing at 60 hertz even though they have a high refresh rate monitor if you know you have a high refresh rate monitor and this option is not going above 60 hertz or whatever make sure that your resolution here is set under the 
tab where it says PC instead of being under the ultra resolution or whatever it says, because otherwise you will be locked to 60 hertz there. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to change this from default to use NVIDIA color settings. And then you're going to want to change the output dynamic range to full. And then don't forget to click apply. After that, we will be clicking on adjust desktop color settings. And this is how we're going to make our game look good. Now, I would recommend just messing with this instead of using NVIDIA filters because NVIDIA filters just take way too much of a hit to your FPS. And what I've found to look best in Warzone for my monitor personally is putting this gamma up to 1.2 and then changing the digital vibrance to 75%. Now the digital vibrance is how saturated your game is going to look. So you may want to adjust this higher for more saturation or maybe even a little lower for less saturation depending on what your preference is and how it looks on your monitor. And then if you do have G-Sync, you'll see set up G-Sync here on the left side. And if you do want to use G-Sync, you can enable it, obviously. Just make sure that you do cap your FPS to three below whatever the refresh rate of your monitor is. So for example, I do have a 240 hertz monitor. So if I were to use G-Sync, I would cap my frame rate in game to 237. You want to do this because if the FPS is fluctuating above and below the refresh rate of your monitor, it's going to cause some input lag issues and it's not going to feel as smooth. So make sure you do do that if you do enable G-Sync. And then from there, we can get to the in-game settings. Starting at the top, as always, I recommend using full screen mode because you get the least amount of input lag while doing so, although tabbing out of the game can be a bit obnoxious. Double check that your screen refresh rate is selected here and also double check that the render resolution is actually the resolution of your monitor. For example, mine is 1440p, so that's 2560 by 1440. If you're on a 1080p monitor, it'll say 1920 by 1080 here. If it is not correct, then this number is most likely not at 100, which is where it should be. Otherwise, you can click advanced and change your display resolution right here. After that, dynamic resolution, we want this disabled. Dynamic resolution frame rate target won't matter because it's disabled. Aspect ratio, we're just going to leave this on automatic. And then sync every frame, otherwise known as V-Sync, we want this disabled. V-Sync does introduce a lot of input lag, which obviously we don't want in a first person shooter. And then for our custom frame rate limit, I like to set this to custom and then click advanced and then set my gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up and then set my menu and out of focus custom frame rate limits to 60 so that way my computer isn't overrate working itself in the menus as i mentioned before with g-sync if you are playing with g-sync you're going to want to cap the fps in the game to three below whatever the refresh rate of your monitor is brightness here is pretty straightforward we just want the middle tab to be barely visible and then the one on the left to be not visible at all and the one on the right to be easily visible and then for display gamma if you're on uh just a normal monitor you want to leave this at 2.2 if you're playing on like a big screen tv or something you could try 2.4 it might look a little better for you nvidia highlights we want this disabled so the game's not just recording random clips for us and then for nvidia reflex low latency we want this on enabled moving on to the quality tab here i do play with my fov at 120 i know fov is generally preference but i highly recommend just trying out 120 and getting used to it because you're just going to be more aware of your surroundings in the game and then if you click advanced under field of view you're going to see ads field of view and i highly recommend again playing on affected there's going to be a lot less visual recoil and it's going to be a lot easier to control your recoil now it's going to be a pretty big adjustment going from independent to affected but once you get used to it it is worth it and then for camera movement we want this on the least at 50 percent that way our screen's not shaking and going all crazy when we're getting airstriked or whatnot or streaming quality Quality, I would put this on normal if you're on a higher end PC. Now, if you're on a lower end PC, yes, put this on low. It's going to help with performance a bit. And if you're on an AMD graphics card, I would put this on low as well because I was experiencing some stuttering issues with this on normal when I did use my AMD PC. Same thing with texture resolution. You can use high if you're on a higher end PC, but if you just want the most performance possible, just put this on low. Now, the difference between low and very low is negative negligible it's like one to two fps so the lowest i would go here is putting it on the low setting and again if you're on an amd graphics card i would put it on this low setting because i experienced some stuttering issues on any setting above this me personally i'm putting this on high i want the game to look a little better and then same thing for texture filter anisotropic put this on a high but for the same reason as before if you're on an amd graphics card put this on low for particle quality we want to set this to high for bullet impacts and sprays it's personal 
preference. It's going to use a little more of your CPU to enable this, but you will see your sprays and impacts of where the bullets are hitting if it's enabled. Tessellation, we want this disabled. Dismemberment and gore effect, same thing as bullet impacts and sprays. If you want to see it, leave it enabled. If you want to save a little bit on your CPU, just disable it. And then on demand texture streaming, we do want this disabled. Scrolling down a bit, we are going to put our filmic strength all the way up to one and then change our anti-aliasing to off. Now, if you hate how the jagged edges look on everything with the anti-aliasing off, I completely understand that. And I would recommend putting it up to the 1X setting, but do keep in mind that adding anti-aliasing can cause a little bit of input lag and greatly affects your performance in game, which is why I recommend putting this off and then putting filmic strength all the way up to one. And then for film grain, we want this all the way turned off. We don't want any of that in the game. Now, DLSS can help if you're playing at 1440p or 4k and you're on a lower end system if you're on a lower end system playing at 1440p or 4k i would recommend putting this at either balanced or quality and seeing what kind of frames it gives you but using dlss in my experience is kind of just gives the game like a weird look to it almost like there's just vaseline smeared all over the screen which is why i don't like it but it could help your performance at 1440p or 4k on lower end systems if you're on a higher end system i wouldn't even mess with with it. Depth of field, world motion blur, weapon motion blur. We want all of that disabled. For shadow map resolution, I put this on low. I've seen a lot of people say that you actually get more frames on normal, which I've tested and it's just not true, at least on both of my PCs that I have tested it on. Now I do know putting shadow map resolution makes the shadows look like absolute crap. And if you just hate that look, you can put it on normal. The performance difference isn't all that big anyway. Cache spot shadows, cache sun shadows. We want both of these in enabled particle lighting we want this on low ray tracing we want this disabled ray tracing has a huge impact on performance and then ambient occlusion and screen space reflection we want both of these disabled now i think i'll be making a separate video for all the audio settings because i have found some stuff to really help with footstep audio i want to go over with you guys and if i do go over all that in this video this video is going to be just way too long so i think we'll do a separate video on that so if you do want to see that video and you're not subscribed yet make sure you click that subscribe button and turn notifications on also drop a like on this video if it did help you i'd really appreciate that and just a reminder i do stream wednesday through sunday mornings now over on twitch link will be in the description and i'll see you guys in the next video here's the web peace